Hi everyone, Phil Pendlebury here and hope you're having a super mega large day. Welcome back to the Steinberg Nuendo channel and my little section Nuendo Explained. So here we go, another little two-part mini-series, Duology, and we're going to talk about the Project Logical Editor. This is something that a lot of people miss out. It's a very powerful feature. So I'm going to show you how it works and some practical examples of how to use it. Let's get into it. OK, so here we are with Nuendo 13 open. And I must point out, by the way, a couple of people mentioned last time, uh, we are using Nuendo 13 here. This is the official version. I've made a few little tweaks to the interface and to the window display and so on and so forth. But this is Nuendo 13, right? Honest. OK, so I've got the uh, Project Logical Editor open. If you haven't seen it before, the first thing I want to do is just quickly explain what it does and how it can be useful. The Project Logical Editor, it's often ignored. And to me, it's one of Nuendo's most powerful tools for search and replace functions in the project window. And it allows you to specify filter conditions and combine them with actions. And it comes with a number of presets that you can use as a starting point for your own settings. So the first thing I'm going to do is have a quick look at the interface. At the top here, we've got the actual preset area. And if I drop that down, you can see that I've got all my user presets, which is what I'm going to be showing you today. And then, of course, there will be all the factory ones as well that do various things. And pretty much you name it, you can do it. That's the preset area. And here we have the place where you can enter the description of your preset once you save it. So then we've got filter conditions. And this is where we decide what will be affected. And let's just give you an example of a filter condition. So if I insert and say container type is equal to a folder track, well, that speaks for itself, doesn't it? So Basically, what that means is we are looking for anything that is equal to a folder track. But we can also add other things onto that. So if I just do a quick insert, and we've now got media type is equal to audio. This won't work because a folder track doesn't contain anything. It contains other tracks. But if I change that to, for example, just track, so the container type is a track, and the media is audio, then the project logical editor will be looking to work on an audio track. So you can also build up some quite complicated things here. Let's uh, just pull up one of my examples, bracket test. And we can surround things with brackets so that they get operated on separately from each other. So in this case, rather than just running from top to bottom, what we'll get is media type equal to audio, name equals audio one or media type is equal to MIDI and name is equal to MIDI 1. So that's the top area. So let's just quickly add something in there, media type equal to audio. We'll leave it at that for now. So next we have the actual action list. And this is where we tell the project logical editor what to do with the things that have been chosen by this step here. We've then got pre-process commands and post-process commands, and they pretty much speak for themselves. They allow you to choose from a menu of tons of things that can happen before this takes place and after this takes place. And then finally, the actual functions itself, which is transform, delete, select, or deselect. And another thing which is really useful to know is that once you've built up all these, presets, you can then assign them to a single key command. OK, so we've had a quick look at the interface itself. And now what I'd like to do is show you two or three practical examples of how to use it. And hopefully that will give you an idea of how to start building stuff up yourself. So here's a project where we've got three audio tracks. And I'll show you them in the mixer. All of them have EQ enabled. One, two, three, all have the EQ enabled. So let's look at a project logical editor preset that will disable the EQ only on selected tracks. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the preset itself rather than building it up from scratch. I'm just going to go to toggle. And the one we're looking for is toggle EQ bypass of selected tracks. So let's quickly go through that. The container type is equal to a track. 
The property is selected. You could have changed that to any of these other options here, but the property we've set it to is selected. And the track operation EQ bypass is toggle. So now we'll bring up the mixer. We've still got the three tracks here. And if I just select that one and that one, for example, and hit apply, we have to close this down so that you can see. You can see that the EQ has been bypassed on the two selected tracks. And just as a you know an example of the logic here, if we selected all of those tracks and again bring up the project logical editor and keep the same preset here, we're going to toggle the EQ of all of the tracks. So if we hit apply, you should now see that we'll have to close it. This one has now been enabled. The next one has been disabled and the following one has been enabled. What we can do is just have a quick look at that and make it maybe a little bit more logical for what you might need. So instead of saying toggle EQ bypass, what we'll do is we'll say disable. Now the logic here is that the track operation is EQ bypass. So if we disable the bypass, that means that we'll enable all the EQs. So this way you're not gonna get a toggle you're going to get all of the EQs turned on. So let's hit that. We've got transform here, which means it is going to transform. We'll worry about the other stuff later. And now we'll have a quick look. And the result should be that all the EQs are now enabled. Right, let's have a look at another one of the existing presets. So what we're going to do here is look at a way to toggle automation read of all the tracks. So once again, I'll bring up our project logical editor. I'm going to search for automation, toggle automation read of visible tracks. So as you can see, container type equal to track. Property is not set as hidden. Don't forget this might look odd, but it's actually kind of reverse logic. So it's not hidden. And the, the track operation is going to be read toggle. So you know what's going to happen if I click this, if we can look over here at the screen, you can see that the read automation has been switched on. And once again, we can turn it off. Now you might be saying, well, yeah, there's other ways to do that. And there often is, but the thing here is you do have a lot of flexibility to build and add things on. So for example, Let's say we only wanted to read enable normal tracks, but not group or effects tracks. So you can see we've got equals track, property is not hidden, but we need to add some more stuff here. So we're going to insert another command below that one. And what we're going to say, we've already said that if the track is not hidden, so what we're going to do now is we're going to say, and the media type is not equal to a group. And for the sake of, you know, doing a little bit more work, media type is not equal to an effect track, if there is any. So now if we look over here, I'm going to click the button and you'll see that we've enabled read automation on just the audio tracks there. And if we do it again, it's toggled off. And of course, there would have been another way to do that. We could remove this and we could say media type is equal to audio. And once again, now only the audio tracks will be affected. For this one, I'm going to show you one of my own presets. So what we've got here is another little setup, but we've got an or and an and here. So media type is equal to MIDI, or media type is equal to audio, and the length is less than 10 seconds. We want to set the color to a fixed value of orange, and we're going to transform. Now then, why did I make this? Well, because sometimes small parts didn't stand out. So what I wanted to do was make sure that anything less than 10 seconds got a nice bright color. So let's just click apply on that. And you can see everything there immediately became orange. Now, if I undo it, 
You'll notice that all these parts became orange, but none of the others did because they are longer than 10 seconds. Now we can change that. So let's adjust this value here to say anything that's less than one second. And we'll quickly just undo the coloring. And now let's see what happens. And you can see now that we've clearly marked any parts that are less than one second. I'll close that down so you can see it. And that's pretty neat, isn't it? So you've got quite a lot of control over what you can do. And opening up presets enables you to edit things to your liking. Let's move on and have a look at one more. So the final one I'd like to show you is all about duplicating tracks. And this is something that we do a lot. So let me bring this one up. This is one of my favorites and I use this on a key command all the time. So this is called dupe no data. And this uses the pre and post commands as opposed to it being more complex here. So as you know, when we duplicate a track, we get a D in brackets and some people don't like that. So what I've done is I've made this little preset that is gonna do properties selected. So it will only work on the selected track. We're gonna search for that D in brackets and we're gonna put a minus sign in front of it. Before anything happens, we're going to duplicate the track. After, we're going to select all and delete. So basically what we're going to end up with here is a new track with no data on it, with the name and a minus in front of it. So let's select that track and see what happens. And there we are. So all the settings from that track have been copied. Everything, all the plugins that were in there, any EQ and so on. And the name has not been given that D in brackets, but what we do have is a minus afterwards, which means to me that there's no data on it. So let's bring up my other one, which is the duplicate with data. And what this one is gonna do is very similar, except for we're gonna add a plus sign because the data is still there. We're gonna duplicate the track and we're not going to delete the data. So let me select the track, hit apply. And there now over here, you can see fill voice plus and that the whole data itself has been duplicated. So the final thing I'd like to show you before we close down this video is the key commands. So if we go over here to key commands, if I type in here dupe, you can see in the key command list there, all of my presets from the project logical editor exist you can assign key commands to them. And this is where things really come to life because as you can see, I've got the standard control D here and all I have to do is hit control D and I can do the duplicate with no data. All right, so now if I just want to quickly duplicate that track with all its settings and including the data, all I have to do is hit control D on my keyboard and it's done. So that's how easy it is once you've assigned key commands, and we'll get into some really interesting uses of that in the next video. Meanwhile, just wanted to add, have an experiment with it, mess around, build up some stuff. And the other thing is that all my presets are available if you wanna download them. I'll put a link in the description for that. So in the next one, what we're gonna do is have a look at one specific preset that I built and why did I build it? I look forward to seeing you soon.